Let's go. This is so insane. America deserved 9-11, dude. Fuck it. I'm saying it. We're there to partner with them. We're not there doing our own thing. What did we're he there say? Partnering and training in a video and, and game. And, and, and oh, in a video game. It's all good. So that, that's part of what we're doing. And the other part is just knowledge. We want what a fucking liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. Holy shit, dude. Fuck it. I'm saying it. Saying it. Can I get a boomer doom? Must terminate. Your Bajuba gods are not happy. You in blue gods. Here go. I are not at my head have a parinate. In a Jiji. In boy. You move in love. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Yo, what's up, everybody? For those, okay, I saw the what the fuck from Samurai. For those that have not heard the infamous Hassan clip, um, that is something Hassan said years ago. He uh, got banned for it, but a lot of people took it out of context because instantly after that, where the clip ends, he uh, goes into explaining what he meant about how America literally caused 9-11 to happen with our intervention in the Middle East since the 1930s. And he was criticizing uh, a Republican politician who is a war hawk and just wants to keep sending us into more wars, was trying to stoke more wars in the Middle East, trying to get us not to withdraw from Afghanistan, things like that. And uh, Hassan was just like, America deserved 9-11. And then he clarified by being like, what I mean is we, like the American State Department, the American military industrial complex caused 9-11 to happen. But a lot of people, bad faith people, ran with that one clip, just cut the clip right there. And were like, oh, Hassan said like everybody that died in 9-11 that day deserved it. And he was like, that's not what he said. That's not what he meant at all. But uh, that's a part of Hassan lore. If you don't know that, you need to know. Oh my God. Okay, it's fine. We're fine. We're good. We're all good. Nobody saw that. Nobody. It was artistic anyway. But, uh, but one thing... We're not going to get too much. We won't get too into it. But one thing you could never forget. Never forget this. Rest in peace to all 2,996 Americans who lost their lives and the 48,664 Afghanis and the 1,690,903 Iraqi lives the 35,000 Pakistanis who paid the price for a crime they did not commit. So whenever you're not, never forgetting 9-11, don't ever forget the latter, okay? 
And by ladder, I mean what came later, not the ladder to heaven as some of us know from South Park. People from all over the country are coming to see the ladder, feeling a connection to its symbolism and beauty. Even country singer Alan Jackson has shown up with a song he has written about the ladder. Alan Jackson is, of course, the man who wrote the song, Where Were You When the World Stopped Turning, about the tragedies on September 11th. And now he's here with... Oh, wait, what? Why did it just do that? ...world stopped God turning about the tragedies on September 11th. And now he's here once again to capitalize on people's emotions. Let's listen <laughs> in. Where were you when they built the ladder to heaven? <laughs> did it make you feel like crying? Or did you think it was a uh... kind of game? Oh, what? What'd he say? Well, That's a big game, man. In the ladder to heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am calling him Bribe right now. That's right. Oh, yeah, the towers got their revenge. That was my 9 11. The towers fell. So good. That part, this part right here. It's on people's emotions. Capitalize on. Now he's here once again to capitalize on people's emotions. Let's <laughs> listen in. Where were you when the... Oh, man. What the fuck is this? Why am I getting ads? Bri Bri. I have ad blocker activated. I'm trying Bri Bri just because it feels a little bit nicer. It feels a little nicer, but I just figured we'd start stream. Some nice, calm, sentimental vibes, you know? What would you do? Never forget... What happened on that day and the, the terror America reigned around the world because of it? What would you do if asked to make the ultimate sacrifice? Would you think about all oh wait, Brian, what's that? Brian, you got something you want me to listen to? You got you got a clip? Pull it up. Oh, Norm MacDonald? All right. <laughs> hey, for the ninth consecutive year, uh, Nick, JetBlue Air, Airlines? Rank first for satisfaction among all North American airlines. Yeah. But you know what ranked least in satisfaction? 9-11 Airlines. Oh. What a terrible name for an airline. It reminds <laughs> me of that tragedy. <laughs> oh, 9-11. Yeah, no. Oh, don't laugh at 9-11, man. I tried to tell him not to go, laugh. Adam. I know. I, yeah, I walked through laughing? blood and bones in the streets of Manhattan <laughs> trying to find my brother. Jesus. Yeah, he was in northern Canada. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for the ninth consecutive Okay, Brian, year, thanks. Uh, that was a good one. Good one, Brian. Appreciate that. Oh, man. How we do today, though? How's everything? Who, uh... Who out... Who here in chat is somebody that could say they beat pre-nerf or Don? I can. I beat or Don before they nerfed him. I got some videos on that. We're gonna watch that. I do want to do a little bit of uh, debate recap, but w by watching the majority report, I watched a little bit of the end right before they went into the fun half today, and Sam Cedar was doing such a good job at pointing out how Kamala was just setting up Trump every single time she talked. She would say something just hoping that he was gonna bring up the the immigrants eating pets things like she was just like setting it up every way and like she would set it up he would fall for the bait and then the camera would go to her and you would just see the smile on her face like i can't believe it worked like it worked exactly like we talked about it when we were rehearsing like we i said i was gonna say this and then he responded with this like it's crazy we didn't think it was actually gonna work but it worked because there's some things that donald trump could have done yesterday there's some things he really could have done and said to try to win over the audience. But he just looked like a fucking weirdo the whole time. Just like a complete deranged weirdo. He could have been out here like Hillary, you, or sorry, Kamala, you just got endorsed by Dick Cheney the other day and said you were honored by his endorsement. You, what are you, pro Iraq war? I was against the Iraq war when that was starting. I'm against war. You're a part of the establishment. I'm not. He didn't do any of that shit. He didn't do any of that. Like stuff that he did in 2016, didn't do any of that. Not at all. He just looked like a complete fucking loser. So we're going to watch a little bit of that. Um, but would it really be 
the day of 11-9 if we didn't commemorate it with, with a little, little something special. We bring the boom. That's what we do. We bring the boom. Oh, wait. Oh, wrong. Brian, you fucked it up. Andrew? We'll be bringing the boom around the quarter past three. We bring the boom so loud the whole earth shakes. With double drunk chocolate cookies. And chicken bake spice and citrus. We bring the boom and everybody deserves. And we call him Big Justice because that's what he serves. Wait. Hold on. I'll answer that in a second. Right, Boca Raton. And you'll never get beat. We'll throw some paper towels and, and get me all me. We're pushing weight in the gym and we're crushing the ball. Big yeah, and then trans the operations on illegal the immigrants in prison. Like what the fuck? Can never be a doom. Ashley and mother of big justice even bring you the ball. We bring the ball. Actually, you know what? I forgot to pull it up. Let me see if I can find this clip real quick. I want to find this clip. Fuck. Where were you when the world Oh my Jesus down? Christ, bro. What that did I just see on Twitter? Holy day. fuck. Oh, here it is. Were Perfect. This is it. With your wife and children. We'll pull that up in a minute. On some stage in LA. Oh my god. Beautiful. Beautiful. What a song. What a song. Against that blue sky. Um, but uh, but yeah, here. Look, look, I feel like this clip right here shows the average, median, like undecided voter, and how they respond to like when Trump is saying this crazy shit. It's the same way in the midterms, 2022, when all of these like Republican people that were running were just running on the trans panic and it was weirding everybody out. Everybody's like, why are you like hyper fixated on trans people? This is weird. Like even like, like Midwestern moms, like who are like, I like have like kids who are trans or like kids whose like friends are trans. Like I, this is like a normal thing in life. Why are these Republican politicians like talking about passing bills where they're going to be like looking at people's uh private parts in schools like this is ridiculous and it weirded people out in the same way that stuff like this weirds out normal ass people these 12 and what up weed 14 or, these 12 and probably 14 or 15 different policies like she was big on defund the police in minnesota she went out wait a minute i'm talking now wait no not this uh, part wanted to let criminalists she went out and did things that nobody would ever think of now she wants to do transgender operations on illegal aliens that are in prison this is a radical left liberal Dude, that will do this, this. Up, she wants to I, I, but it you sounds guns, insane she will because it is insane in don't want to get it yeah but you gotta be more poised than this you gotta be more poised than this it's like he's saying, saying shit thing, funny so important in my like, opinion stop trying, like, he's so not trying to be funny but it's our he's 12 and that is the average voter when they hear something like that of course, there's like the bigots out there who he's like dog whistling to, not dog whistling, just straight up like, here, listen to me. Do you agree, agree with me? But normal people hear that and they're just like, what the fuck? Yeah, no poise, all right. Not demure. Not very demure at all. But like I was saying, he, he had all of these opportunities. 
there's so many openings. He could have been hitting her on the, oh, you like locked up people for smoking weed. There are so many little instances he could have got her. And I'm not trying to be out here like helping Trump. I'm just thinking about it from like their perspective, like the things that they could have done to make the debate better. And you know his team was sitting back there behind the scenes just like, oh my God, no, please. We, this is not what we talked about. They're like, no, he's going like completely off script right now. This is not what we, we planned. All week, Kamala was talking about, oh, I was doing mock debates. I had like a fake Trump impersonator while we were like planning for these debates. And Trump's just like, yeah, no, nah, it just doesn't matter. I, we'll be fine. I'm just gonna wing it like usual. And then he got up there and just looked like the biggest weirdo the whole time. It's like, they were like, oh, Tim Walls, you're gonna call me a weirdo? Bet. I'm gonna match it. Oh, what up, Chad? Did I say that? Chad, I know I said hi, weed. But, um, yeah, he just completely lost it and the way Sam Cedar was talking about it when I watched the last little bit of his show and I want to go back we're gonna watch it I want to watch his coverage the post uh, debate recap but he really pointed out and I didn't really notice this but it seems like Kamala and her team planned it out and I did somewhat mention this last night actually there was that part when I think it's when they were talking about the question of her race of Trump questioning whether she was black or not. And how a couple weeks ago during the Dana CNN interview, she asked Kamala that and Kamala was just like, let's move on. I don't want to even address that. That's ridiculous. That's what the Trump campaign wants her to do. Or the Trump campaign wants her to address it and go into detail and be like, well, no, my father was this, my mother was this. Cause they, they just think it embarrasses her. So her just saying, I'm gonna skip past that. No thing, we're not even gonna like dignify that with the response. Just moves on. Last night, though, it was the opposite. They were getting Trump to explain everything. She's like, oh, Central Park 5 stuff. Oh, explain how you feel about immigrants. Explain all this. And she didn't even talk policy. She brought up, like, three policies, two of them being, like, right-wing policies. Okay? Israel should defend itself. Israel has a right to defend itself. That was one of her policies. Uh, the right-wing anti-immigration bill, that was another one of her policies. And then she brought up the, the child tax credit and the uh, first-time home buyer. So, like, four policy that she, policies that she brought up all night. The whole time was her just trying to cumster and dumpster Trump and point out how bad of a person he was. And if it's from the perspective, like, if we're, if we're like, in a accept the narrative that she was planning that and they had planned this all week and they were doing mock debates where they were like all right you're gonna ask him this and we're hoping that it baits him to say this crazy ass shit and it just fucking worked every single time i kind of fuck with that that was pretty cool i fuck with that because all night i was criticizing for the lack of policy and how like i think that running on trump bad is not a good a winning strategy talking about progressive policies that will materially change people's lives is how you win an election it's how you turn out those voters that historically vote democrat that are sitting there thinking like oh i don't think i want to vote this time they're not saying anything that makes me want to vote do i really need to should i take off a whole day of work or take off time work to actually go vote when they're not even speaking to anything i care about that's going to change my life now there's people like me and like other people in chat who we talk about things like oh lesser of two evils harm reduction voting but the average voter doesn't think like that. The average voter thinks exactly like I said. Should I take off work today to go vote? Like, are, have they really been speaking to me? Are they, they're not like, I, I can't, I can barely afford health care. And none of these Democrats are even talking about a public option. Things like that. That's how people vote. And I remember Barge even said it last night. It was like 98% people vote like along their party, party lines. This whole like idea that there's this undecided Republican voter, Nikki Haley constituent, Liz Cheney constituent that might vote for Kamala if she tries to outright wing Trump. It's not going to happen. It's not. And if it does, like it's in such small numbers that it's not what affects the race. What affects the race is turning out your base. Oh, damn. What a moment. What a moment in history this was. Good. Good. And that's the 60 of our SRA reading program. Direct instruction. I know very well where that came from. Okay. Are you ready, my butterflies? Yes. LLP position, eyes on me. One, two, three. Get 
get ready to read all the words on this page without making a mistake. Yeah, he, and uh, I also, I think that, way. Samurai, yeah, but that also, fine. I'm pretty that's sure fine. right in the beginning when she mentioned his crowd sizes and people leaving his, his uh, rallies, because right after that was like an actual policy question that David Muir asked Trump, and he was just like, hey, never mind, I have to address this fucking crowd size thing, okay? Excuse me? And then, like, goes off to talk about his crowd size and how nobody's going to her rallies. That set him off. And after that, he was just a fucking sassy bitch the whole time. Oh. Losing it. Like, unraveling. On, oh. Like, in real time. But yeah, I also think that, too. I think he thinks he's got it in the bag and he's just not taking it as seriously. And I mean, like I was saying, with the, the way the polls are looking, the margin of error is uh it, it's looking like 2016 numbers where it's like oh no hillary's winning by a few points but it's margin of error and a lot of trump voters those voters are hard to poll and then <laughs> election day came and it was like oh no hillary did not have it in the bag it was that that sam alcoff tweet that i read uh yesterday here let me pull that back up Thank you. Everybody touch the title of your story. Fingers under the title. Get ready to read the uh, title. The and this is this tweet is like post the like Kamala Mentum when she was like first announced and she like rose up in the polls. We're watching Kamala run a Hillary Clinton like campaign of I'm with her while actively enabling a genocide and the highest paid consultants are like, golly, we don't know why these numbers are dipping. Hope everyone votes. Yes, the pet vote. Fingers under the first word. That, that, that's Get what it's starting to look like because way. she's Get been ready. running to the center, trying to run further to the right than Trump, not appealing to her base. She's trying to appeal to these imaginary Nikki Haley, Liz Cheney voters that are never going to vote for her. She likes to go running with her. Um, go on. Damn, she 630 people are voting for a One Piece character? Oh my God, they're going to win. Get ready from the beginning of that sentence. Get ready. Is it illegal to live stream you waiting in line to vote? Not waiting in line, but you can't vote going into the, or film going into the booth. I did see your fit. You were serving big time, period. Where is it, uh, media? Serving big time, I hit it with a heart. So much serve, so much slay. You would have won in Dress to Impress. Well, I don't know what the category topic would have been, but you would have won big time. Just straight slaying. Period. So good. Try that again. Get ready. Okay, let's go back and analyze this really quickly. Title of your story. Fingers on. Where do Where do they come and tell him? Did they tell him right in the beginning? Really excited for me to be here. I want to thank Mr. Title. Get ready to read the. Thank you. Yeah, he has to know at that point. I didn't see them come up and tell him. Really excited for me to be here. I want to thank Miss Daniels for being a teacher. I want to thank Gwen for being a principal. And I want to thank you all for practicing reading. I think. So much. I think really that important. clip I just showed of like Los Poyos and his dad freaking out over that clip. I think that's how a lot of Americans yeah. felt last night. Direct instruction. I know very well where that came from. So, yeah, you, no matter what you're registered as, when it comes to the, like, general election, you can vote however you want. If you're voting in the primary, though, like when it was, like, Hillary versus Bernie and they are trying to figure out who the Democratic nominee was going to be, that's when you have to be a part of that party. Like, to be a part of your party's primary, you have to be signed up for that party. Like if I was a Democrat and then I or a Republican and I wanted to go vote for Bernie in the primary 2016, they would say, no, you have to register as a Democrat before you can come participate in this. What up, fourth? You register to vote when you turn 18. All right, what's this? Oh, just some, just some Al Qaeda on the monkey bars. Just a little, just a little fun on the the playground. A little fun with the boys. Oh yeah, you're good. Like I said, it only matters in the primaries, and the primaries are like, like I said, that's when the party decides who we're gonna like run in the general election. Who's gonna run against Trump? Who's the Republican Party's gonna have run against 
whoever is running on the Democrat side, you know. But once it's the general election, you can vote for whoever you want, no matter what party you're signed up with. No, no, no. You are Big Boom. Okay, now that part's stupid. What's this? I've never watched this. Osama Bin Laden raid animation. Let's see this real quick. Let's check this out. And then we'll get into, uh, we'll get into some normal shit. There's no music? Okay, hold on. I feel like we need a song with this. We bring the boom! Wait, I'm blocking the, the images. So this is when they were raiding Osama bin Laden's compound. I think he was in Pakistan, right? Pretty sure that's where he was. We call him Big Justice because that's what he serves. We bring the happiness and laughter when we enter the room. And we're changing up the world with the boom or go. We bring the boom. You can change what you're registered as whenever you want. Um, but okay, so the only thing with that is sometimes in primaries, like I was saying how you have to be aligned with your party to vote in the primary. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, sometimes there's a cutoff date for that, for like voting in the primary. Like say you want to like go vote in the primary the primaries that day you can't like register as a democrat that day i don't think maybe though there i think i think in 2020 in my state at least it might be state by state like i think my state they changed it to where you could do same day registration which that's good that those are good things wait what did it replay way better <laughs> this is better than the music video true this is freedom. Let freedom ring. All right, let's just, you know what? Let's just look for a little bit. Let's see, is there a... Uh, are there any... Uh, what a fucking liar, dude. What a fucking... Any 9-11 tweets we need to go over before we, we do debate...